All right, everybody, on our flying lab experience, the first flying lab experience on a short and medium haul aircraft, there's another highlight coming up for you, seeing us on your mobile devices. I want to introduce to you to an explorer, a researcher, and a man who dedicated the past 15 years of his life, actually, to research in artificial intelligence. He drives his dream from Frankfurt, but he has owned a lot of reputation from all around the globe and we are very, very proud to have him here and uh, listen to his thoughts about artificial intelligence, digitalization and, well, the future that's coming up to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, very proud to welcome here in our little TV studio, <laughs> in our flying lab TV studio, which is probably the weirdest art for you, the uh, worst place for you to give a, a, a keynote speech, Chris, but uh, it, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Boos. Thank you very much. It's probably the coolest the keynote coolest. I've ever given, right? <laughs> so um, just of a way of introduction, I'm, I'm Chris, you already said, from Arago. Um, we are probably one of two independent artificial intelligence teams in the world that uh, strive to do general artificial intelligence, and I'm going to tell you why I believe this is important. So you've seen a lot of hype around AI, and AI is definitely a topic that is very hot in everything. Everything seems to be machine learning and artificial intelligence these days, mainly because there has been a lot of progress, and you see that algorithms start choosing for you, start giving you good recommendations. But what does this mean to the world of business and not the world of platforms? I believe that artificial intelligence is highly, highly underestimated, even though we have seen the investment volume double and triple in the last few years. And that is because way before we're getting talking robots and artificial androids, we will have an artificial intelligence that can run our businesses and our economy. Meaning, in very concrete terms, that anything that is a business process can and will be run by an artificial intelligence. That might sound scary to some people, but actually, it's the only way for most established companies to compete in a market that has already happened. And if you look at the people who use artificial intelligence today, it is mainly the platform companies that already have exponential growth. And these platform companies are about to shake up um, the general economy the established companies, a great term, and this is why you see all this digitization happening like we're talking about today. What do these platform companies do? Well, it is quite simple that they have much more money because they typically run their business with 20% of the money they get in. In order to, 20% to, uh, of the money they get in, they use to produce all the money that comes in, which leaves them 80% spare. After giving money back to shareholders, that means there is a lot of money left to go and attack different verticals. You have seen platform companies building self-driving cars. You have seen platform companies going into energy. You've seen platform companies, companies going into media. And all these things happen because they simply have the resources to try. Basically, these guys are ready to attack any kind of vertical today. But now, with the first implementation of artificial intelligence that are being used, the companies are moving further. They're hacking the customer and consumer life cycle, meaning that you have seen all this digital assistance, the first real rollout of a more generalized artificial intelligence coming out. These digital assistants are becoming part of our lives. You now go and say, hey, XYZ, buy me a car hey, XYZ, book flight from Frankfurt to fictitious point or whatever, and you're getting a flight. It is no longer a person making that choice what is being bought. It is going to be an artificial intelligence making that choice. And that means, it sounds strange to a lot of people, but it actually means that more consumers are going to get what they are really looking for. They are going to get something that exactly fits them. The platform would rather make a loss on a specific transaction than dissatisfy a consumer. So by going through the digital assistants that are AI driven, consumers will have more satisfying implementations. But what happens to all the companies that produce goods and services? They all of a sudden find themselves as just being OEMs. OEMs like today you find in the automotive industry because they no longer speak to consumers directly. In order to survive in this kind of an environment, 
the established economy has to do something quite simple. You have to have good products, of course. Without good products and services, you can't sell anything. You have to have a strong brand. But a strong brand is still very attackable on a platform. You can have great service because if you lose your customer interaction on this point of sale, you can still have your customer interaction while your customer is with you, like on a plane, which is a great place to produce great service. And the third thing that you can do is innovation. As you see here, innovation means that if someone is looking for something specific, innovative, and there's very few people offering that, then the platform will have to choose you. So as you see, AI is basically hacking into what we know as the consumer life cycle. But if you really, if you don't just want to survive as a company, if you want to compete, the only way to do that is to become exponential yourself. And how would you go and become exponential? How would you go and become exponential? You use AI to run all your processes for you. Your business have a lot of processes. With all the money that comes out of this and the people that you get free, people who know your vertical, people who have experience, people who can teach this experience to machines. This is an absolutely unique opportunity for companies that have experience, for companies that go into the world not just trying new things, but actually know what they're doing, teach that into an AI and run the process. That means we have to go into the world and take it as an opportunity, not as a threat, taking artificial intelligence um, not as a threat towards what we're doing process-wise, but as an opportunity in order to recapture ground that has maybe already been lost by established companies in the economy. Thank you very much. I see we're getting wrapping up here. I believe that was Chris. the shortest intro to AI I ever gave. That is true. I think I there's lots more questions. We'll answer them later. To come. We can answer the question. You can answer the questions uh, when we're back on the ground. Um, and there's a chance for you to ask all the questions that you have.